we're having some technical difficulties, so we'll just hold on for a few minutes. change all of that. So, well, I think what we're going to do is just um, refer to them as uh, <coughs>
Yeah. We're ready, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, we're ready. Okay, the meeting will please come to order. This is the duly advertised meeting of the Joliet Zoning Board of Appeals. In our capacity, we hear petitions <clears throat> for relief from the strict provisions of our city ordinance. In matters of this type, the decision of this board is final in respect that it does not go to the mayor or the city council for any further action. If you disagree with our decision, you do have recourse in a court of record. We also hear petitions for variations of land use. In matters of this type, we act as an advisory committee to the mayor and city council, making a recommendation either for or against it. Final decision on land use is made by the mayor and the city council. Secretary, call the roll. Ms. Safford? Present. Mr. Lesio? Here. Mr. McCauley? <clears throat> Here. Mr. Nactree? Here. Mr. Riggs? Here. Mr. Hennessy? Here. Okay, Mr. To uh, vary from the agenda? Uh, uh, there will be uh, some variants. Um, we'll first need to approve the minutes from the September 17th meeting. Is there a motion? Motion to approve. Last, last. Okay. Uh, our next item is citizens to be heard on agenda items. Um, this is for anyone wanting to speak on items that are on the agenda. Our uh, four minute rule is in effect. Kendall? Yeah. Can we go back and um, take a vote for oh. the zoning board for Sorry. the um, meeting minutes from last month, please? Yes, we can. Yeah. Uh, there, there was a motion, correct? Yes. Okay, was there a second? Second. Okay, I, go ahead and call the roll. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Lesio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Nactree? I wasn't here, so I abstain. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Uh, citizens to be heard on agenda items. Please approach, sir. You must swear you win, sir. You swear the evidence your body presents the truth under penalty of law. Yes. Your name and address, please. My uh, name is Jim Maher. I'm at 2804 Bay Ridge Drive in Joliet. Um, I'm here to express my objections to a special use permit and series of variations for a car dealership located at 2020 to 2022 Essington Road. In addition, I'll request that this board delay further consideration of this request until the affected neighbors have had a reasonable period of time to consider these proposals. This is background. My wife and I have been uh, Joliet Rus residents in the Picardy subdivision for 30 years now. Our house is just about two blocks from the Darcy DOTMC dealership and the existing dealership is readily visible across the field from our back porch. My objections to these proposals are both general and specific. Generally, I object that the planned development will be a further intrusion of business presence into what had been an undisturbed residential area. Note that the existing constructed footprint of the Darcy GMC dealership extends an unusual distance east of Essington Road. Between Jefferson and the mall, nearly all business properties extend east from uh, Essington, less than half as much as the Darcy dealership does. Um, except at major east-west thoroughfares, Fide Road is not a thoroughfare, and the Picardy and Warwick subdivisions have enjoyed a more secluded residential character than most areas. Unfortunately, the planned Darcy development will extend the dealership's constructed foot footprint even further east. Uh, very unusually deep business property, perhaps uniquely so. Um, this intrusion will detract from the private residential character of the Picardy and Warwick subdivisions. The clear visibility of the dealerships will be far less enjoyable to these property owners 
than either the existing field or potential new developments, residential development. This change is, uh, changes the essential character of the locality and will negatively impact property values. More specifically, I object to the granting of the special use permit. It will impinge on the use and enjoyment of residential properties in the vicinity. The special use will have a significant negative impact on the property values of Piccadilly and Warwick residences and will impair the future growth of those property values. <coughs> also, I fear the application fails to satisfy specified criteria by considering only business properties and ignoring affected residential properties. Also, I object to the proposed landscape variances. These variances, if granted, will alter the character of the locality. Even today, the ready visibility of the existing dealership during the day, and especially the visibility of inventory lot lighting at night, has detracted from the residential character of Pickardy and Warwick. Expansion of the constructed footprint further north, and especially east, will intensify these impacts. Uh, the failure to provide required tree planting to the north will exacerbate this problem for Piccadilly residents. Failure to provide landscape islands will further degrade the essential residential character of the general area. Lastly, I request that the Zoning Board of Appeals defer making its uh, final decision regarding these proposals so that affected neighbors can have a reasonable period of time for review and consideration. The staff report that provides the details of these proposals was not available until less than a week ago. Many residents of the surrounding residential neighborhoods may have had insufficient notification to adequately consider these proposals. Thank you for the opportunity to address the board. Please approach. Where you're in. Hello. You swear the evidential box presents the truth under penalty of law. Yes. Name and address, please. Jose Zavala, 2801 Valley Forge Drive, Chile, Illinois, 60435. Mm -hmm. I, too, as a gentleman prior to me, uh, just received this notification last week um, and didn't have enough time to either locate uh, the packet um, of information and review everything. As, as stated and wasn't able to contact uh, many neighbors to see if they had any uh, previous information. I had to leave work early um, to get here also at 2 p.m., which I would recommend, you know, maybe doing later uh, meetings, typically in the afternoons if possible for any future, um, any future meetings of this nature. And I, I would too want to just review the, the packet um, as far as any preliminaries or um, either future expansion of any businesses in the Warwick subdivision area um, and neighboring subdivisions. Um, I am at the northeast corner of both lots. Uh, I have adjacent uh, uh, fields to my property. And I would be interested in knowing um, any of the stormwater detention uh, criteria because at this point there isn't anything um, as I'm the last uh, resident on that street. I happen to get all the rainwater when when time uh, the winter changes to spring during those uh, those seasons. So I always get a tremendous amount of water in the sump pump and it has nowhere to drain to. Um, with the impervious surfaces or any type of service with the further expansion of the parking lot or at that rate, um, any other businesses, I would want to uh, know any uh, of, like I said, any of the storm um, or utility drainage easements that are going to be installed if they are and if there's gonna be any type of fencing or berms going into the to adjacent areas, or if I could review that information to have some time to go over it and, and have a more accurate um, and thorough evaluation. Um, with that being said, I think that concludes my, my thoughts. Thank you. Thanks. Well, I think Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman, um, <clears throat> the next item on our agenda is old, old business public hearing. <clears throat> and there is a request 
to table this item. That's petition 2020-33, and that's a special use permit to allow an indoor and outdoor storage facility located at 1801 West Jefferson Street. And the request is to table this item uh, to the November zoning board meeting. Uh, who requested the tabling? The petitioner has requested the tabling. Okay. Motion to be in order to table. So move. A second. Second. A motion second to table petition 2020-33. Hold the board. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Naftree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Uh, there is one other change to the agenda. We will be moving Petition 2020-39 uh, to the front of the agenda now, and that is a special use permit and series of variations for a car dealership located at 2020-2022 uh, Essington Road. Uh, the petitioner in this matter is the Essington Road Partners Incorporated and Westside Joliet Real Estate Partners, LLC. Uh, their request is a special use permit and a series of variations for a new car dealership and expansion of an existing car dealership. The applicant is requesting the special use and series of variations to allow expansion of the existing Darcy Motors automobile dealership. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes the final decisions uh, on these variance requests. The City Council makes the final decision on the special use permit request. The special use permit request is to establish a Hyundai dealership at 2020 Essington Road and expand the dealership to newly created areas north and east of the existing business. Variation requests include one, variance to waive the requirement for a concrete curb and gutter around portions of the proposed expanded perimeter of the new asphalt inventory lots. Number two, a variance to waive the required landscape islands in the new parking lot area. Number three, a variance to waive the required landscaping for residential screening along a portion of the south property line. Number four, variance to waive the required six foot tall solid fence along a portion of the south property line. Number five, variance to waive the required tree planting along the inventory lots west and north property lines. And finally, number six, a variance from the city's non-residential design standards for bu building architectural materials and elevations. Site-specific information, Darcy Motors built a Buick GMC dealership facility at 2020-2022 Essington Road in 2005. The existing 17.8 acre uh, site uh, has three, I'm sorry, three lot property includes the existing Buick GMC dealership building, detailing shop, car wash, inventory lots, and storm water detention basin. Surrounding zoning land use and character to the north is B3 and that's general business and R4 multifamily residential uh, which is undeveloped. To the south, R2 single family, R3 one and two family, and R4 multifamily zoning and residential development, and that's the Cala Trace and Warwick subdivisions. To the east is R2 and R4 and is undeveloped. To the west is B3 and R2 commercial and residential, and that's the Wexford subdivision. Applicable regulations are as noted. Under general discussion, Darcy Motors wishes to relocate its Hyundai dealership from Jefferson Street to its current Buick GMC autom automobile, automobile inventory lot at 2020 Essington Road. In conjunction with the relocation, Darcy Motors intends to increase the size of its business operations at this location by creating a new display area and new inventory lots north and east of its existing property and relocating the stormwater detention basin further east. The zoning ordinance requires a special use permit for automobile related uses. Therefore, Darcy Motors seeks a special use permit for their new Hyundai dealership, as well as for the expansion areas. 
the proposed size of the uh, Darcy Motors business, including the existing dealership, the new Hyundai dealership, relocated stormwater detention basin and new inventory lots is 28.4 acres. At the October 15th plan commission meeting, the petitioners seek approval of a revised preliminary plat of the subdivision for Darcy Estates, a final plat of Darcy Estates Unit 2 subdivision, a zoning reclassification, and a series of vacations in order to allow for the expansion of the existing Darcy Motors business at this location. And the Planning Commission will take that under consideration later this afternoon. Darcy Motors also seeks variations from the city's landscape and screening regulations and non-residential design standards as part of this project. These variation requests are number one, variants to waive the requirement for concrete curb and gutter around portions of the proposed expanded perimeter of the new asphalt inventory lots. The proposed parking lot will consist of a new entrance off of Essington Road and a new vehicle display area located to the north of the existing dealership and west of the front face of the existing dealership. These portions of the new parking lot will include concrete curb along the edge of pavement for the new entrance and the new display area. The new concrete curb would end with the intersection connecting the new entrance to the existing network of internal drive lanes of the existing dealership. As the new parking lot transitions to the new vehicle inventory parking lot, the concrete curb would no longer run along the perimeter of the new parking lot. At the point of connectivity with the existing dealership parking lot, those entrance points would have concrete curb at the entrances, but nothing further. Number two, a variance to waive the required landscape islands in the new parking lot area. Other than as shown at the new entrance to Essington Road and the new vehicle display parking lot, there will not be any curbed islands located within the large areas of the paved new vehicle inventory parking lots. Since the proposal does not include any curbed islands in the new vehicle parking lots, internal landscaping within the limits of the parking lots would not be provided. Number three, a variance to waive the required landscaping for residential screening along a portion of the south property line. The submitted lands landscape plan includes screening in the form of a new tree line of evergreen and pine trees along the south line of the existing and proposed stormwater detention basin area. However, this screening does not conform to all of the landscape requirements for screening between the residential uh, uh, properties to the south and the business to the north. Therefore, this variance is being requested. Number four, variance to waive the required six foot tall solid fence along a portion of the south property line. Darcy Motors intends to install a six foot high fence along the limits of the existing multifamily lot within Calo Trace uh, development, which would run from the east limits of the B3 zoning district to the south, and that's the Henry L's property, eastward to the west right of way line of Calo Drive. East of this location, Darcy Motors does not wish to install a six foot high minimum solid fence and therefore request a waiver from this landscaping and screening requirement. The areas subject, subject to this waiver request include portions with an existing extensive tree line, stormwater ditch that runs along the common property line and a berm located to the north of the ditch and existing fences installed by the residential property owners. As detailed in variance request number three, Darcy Motors seeks to plant a new tree line of evergreen pine trees that will match the existing line of pine trees in the portion of this area subject to the fencing variance request. Number five, variance to waive the required tree planting along the inventory lots, and that's west and north property lines. Darcy Motors seeks to relocate all required trees and that shade, ornamental, and evergreen away from the new vehicle display and in inventory parking areas. These required trees would be relocated and planted in the green space areas around the stormwater basin and along the bermed buffer with the existing residential zoning district to the south of the new stormwater basin. Darcy Motors will still plant the required parkway trees along the Essington Road right-of-way in the location of the new vehicle display parking lot. The other non-tree plantings would also be installed along the perimeter of the parking lots at the new entrance per the ordinance. 
And finally, number six, a variance from the city's final, oh, I'm sorry, city's non-residential design standards for building architectural materials and elevations. Darcy Motors requests to use majority metal and EFIS siding as opposed to the required predominant masonry material in order to meet Hyundai's national uh, design requirements. Staff has provided a conceptual diagram that illustrates the area subject to these very variation requests as an, as an attachment to the staff report. In addition, the proposed landscape plan and proposed building elevations can also be found as an attachment. Uh, finally, the staff report also includes as an attachment an explanation of Darcy Motors' rationale for these variation requests. If the zoning board desires to recommend approval of the special use permit request and variation request to allow a new car dealership and expansion of an existing car dealership, the following con conditions would be included. Number one, that a final landscape plan shall be submitted to staff for review and approval prior to a certificate of occupancy being issued. Number two, that the special use permit granted uh, shall la uh, terminate and lapse unless there is a building permit or certificate of occupancy obtained not later than 180 days of the effective date of the approval of uh, the ordinance. Number three, should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the special use permit. And finally, that a business license shall be obtained. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Okay, just your presence. This is where the evidence you're about presents the truth. Yes, sir, Your Honor. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon, members of the Zoning Board of Appeals. Michael Hansen, on behalf of the uh, Petitioner, Darcy Motors and Essington Road Partners, comma, Inc. Uh, present with me this afternoon also, Mr. Terry Darcy, the owner of the uh, dealership and the property. Also, Chris Papish from Geotech. I'm gonna ask Mr. Papish at the end of my presentation to make some comments with respect to the uh, uh, drainage of the property in order to answer the uh, previous question of the uh, uh, interested party. Uh, one quick matter before I go on to a brief presentation, I'd like the uh, uh, commission note that the address of the property is 2000-2022, just for the record, if that, uh, Mr. Jackson, if you could make that change. And also before I um, continue, I just would like to make the public comment that I feel very honored and privileged today to stand before you, uh, knowing that we have two of Joliet's most giving, charitable, and prominent citizens in this council chambers, Mr. Terry Darcy and Mr. John Bays. Uh, without them, I don't know, really know where our community would be. They are two individuals who like to do things behind the scenes, don't want any accolades for what they do, uh, and I'd like to thank them for all they've done for the city of Joliet. Um, we've worked with the city staff to make certain that this was a project that complied with all the city requirements. Number one, was compatible with all the owners. Mr. Darcy had a meeting with the residents on the south side of our property. I know Mr. Meyer's comments, uh, while we want to make sure that everyone is satisfied, he lives at Picardy, which is on the north, 600 feet to the north. Uh, a few things I'd like to note uh, in a, with respect to the uh, comments of the earlier persons. Um, number one is that uh, the lighting, lighting is always a concern for these types of developments. Uh, this is not uh, where the, these cars are gonna be located. No, uh, near the southern portion of our boundary, it's gonna be extremely low lighting. There's a new type of lighting that's been developed for car dealerships. I know that a lot of people in Joliet think that the lighting is gonna be like the former Thomas Toyota dealership on Larkin Avenue. Nowhere will this lighting be uh, in that uh, particular situation. Will it be the same as it is now in the Buick dealership? Uh, I think it's even gonna be less than that, okay? Th that's on the Essington Road. This is gonna be lighting in the back of the dealership. So the lighting is gonna be far less intense than what's on Essington Road right now. So I don't think that, that uh, it's my understanding that's not gonna be an issue then for the neighbors. I think we're, we're really concerned about that. Note that the character of this area, we're only requesting a very minor change in the zoning uh, to extend our property eastward uh, uh, in a, uh, not very much. 
Okay, it's, it's be, and the, we are expect to increase our volume of sales by about 20%, bringing Hyundai over to this location as well as the additional parking to the north, creating additional sales tax for the city of Joliet, additional revenue for the city, uh, you know, creating kind of an, an automobile uh, row here, uh, different than what we had on Jefferson Street. So uh, I'd urge the commission to approve the variance and uh, special use permit request today for this. And, we're open to any questions. Questions by the board. Yeah, I, I guess I have one, um, uh, Mr. Hanson. So, um, Mr. Darcy has met with the neighbors, including the neighbors who spoke today. No, he, he had a meeting with some of the neighbors to the south. Okay, uh, I mean, one of the gentlemen who lives on the south. Uh, and the other gentleman lives in Picardy, which is to the north, the subdivision to the north. And then there are also some written comments, I believe, from neighbors on the south. Um, uh, I have not seen any written comments. Okay. Those were the letters that were attached that uh, they sent out to us yesterday. Yeah, there's, there's three written comments, I think, that were in the packet. Yeah, I did not receive co yeah, copies. Those, of those were uh, comments that came through our um, public comment uh, system mm -hmm. online, so we'll we'll make sure we get those okay. to you. I, I. You want to enumerate what those concerns were? You want to have a We'll let Mr. Darcy address. Yeah. This. Go ahead, Terry. Um, a couple comments, and I I'm completely in agreement with you. Um, I've always been a good corporate citizen of Joliet, and I want to treat this as if what if this were in my backyard? So we are going to move east. Uh, a lot of that blue line area. Excuse that, me, I have to swear you in, sir. I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> Process. I swear to tell you. You swear the evidence you're about to present us the truth on the time you're law. Yes. Name and address. Uh, Terry Darcy, 2022 Essington. Thank you. So as we look at that picture up there, um, that blue line represents the outer edge. In the very east end of it, where there's a red line, where there's currently green, and to the blue line will be a new retention area that, that will sheet drain most of that field. So I know that where your lot is, um, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to help you any because there's a kind of a hump there that kind of moves it to I've talked to a few of your neighbors and I understand your water problem. And I said, if I can put some farm tile out there to help move some of that water to this retention basin, I will. And I talked to some of the neighbors along your side. Um, and concerning the, the lights in the back, we. This is actually overflow parking. My employees are gonna park there during the day and things like that. Each one of those light heads, which there's gonna be a minimal amount of them, will have a, um, a sensor that will they'll come on. A lot of the times those lights won't be on at night. If there's nothing parked back there, I don't wanna light that, nor do I want you to have that radiant light. Even along the north side, there's times of the year we might have more inventory than other times of the year. However, I'm gonna say a good part of the time that that whole, uh, that east back probably won't even be lit. It'll only be as needed. And we're gonna do service cars back there, employee parking. So it's not gonna be like we wanna display cars back there. When we do have overflow display, it's gonna be on that north side, but it won't always be full. And, and I don't want it to look like I'm trying to go out there and make that real bright. It's just gonna be for security. And those things are gonna be individually controlled. So if there's nothing back there, we'll just shut them all off. And if the only way they're gonna come on is there are gonna be some security cameras that if there's a motion detected, a, a light will come on for cameras. So I'm, I'm extremely sensitive to you as a neighbor and me as a neighbor. I don't want it doing that would devalue your property or take away from the ambiance of having a field back there. So th those are things I'm trying to do to mitigate what would it be like if I lived back there. A lot of the neighbors um, then on the south if I put a six foot solid fence all the way along there, a lot of them like to come and go through there and that would impede their ability. A, a lot of that is not gonna change for many of those neighbors because it's what we've always had. Um, some of those that are a little bit further to the south where the new retention's going and there might be some lights on occasion on back there. We really wanna heavy up. Uh, we used uh, white pines in the original development and they grew nice and they grew tight and, and they really do create a nice block without stopping you from you know flowing back and forth. The townhomes, we do want to put a solid fence up there. The building's going to be on that side. 
the pines will still be on their side. So they're still gonna have a, a nice feel for that landscape area. We're gonna put the, the solid fence on, on the side of the dealership just in case headlights or something, but that's not gonna, that shouldn't change much for any of them. So um, that's kind of why we decided to do that. I walked that property with a, a landscape architect and we know who's got a pool here and a fire pit there. We wanna make sure when they're sitting in their backyards that, that they're not gonna, it's gonna actually should be nicer for them than, than what they would have now, except there's no cornfield, but there's retention there now, which is, it's gonna be retention. The water's gonna flow. It's gonna, we're gonna try and take some more of that runoff off that field that would go to the south neighbors. And we had another 36 inch line, I think, Chris. <clears throat> so we're really sensitive about making sure that we help the neighbors keep the water from coming into their sump pumps. How sensitive is that alarm system that sets off uh, the security? What could set that off? An animal running through there? <laughs> uh, no, it, it, it takes something more like a car pulling on the lot. Something and like, then, yeah, and then how often just, does that go off? Usually? Not very often. What, what, maybe once a night or once a week or a couple times a week, three times a week. Okay. But if there's no lights on, if there's nothing parked back there, there's, there's really nobody going to be back there. Okay. Any other questions? It sounds like you are trying to be a good neighbor to these folks and hope, uh, I assume that you'll continue the relationship as the construction goes on. Yes. Okay, thank you. The final landscaping, it has to be accepted by the city. What, what remains to be decided there? In terms of the, the landscaping? Yeah, because uh, you've got notice in there that that's one of the conditions that the final landscaping has to be approved. What, what's still not? Yeah, so what, what they'll need to do, um, taking into consideration the variance request, is to submit a plan that actually shows what's going in, what's being left out, and then our staff reviews that and approves it. Okay, but uh, are there any particular items, any concerns that we have? Um, uh, no, no concerns from staff. You know, we were... Um, wanting to make sure that anything that was being left out in terms of landscaping uh, for the display lots, and we understand why there's a, a request for a variance there. They don't want any vegetation, you know, blocking uh, the display of vehicles. So that makes sense to us. But we want to make sure that the other areas that are going to be treated um, with landscaping get the proper amount of landscaping. Um, the curbing uh, concerns, I think, um, had to do with stormwater runoff uh, that sort of thing, and uh, we've taken a look at that. Our public works staff doesn't have an issue with it, and our planners don't have an issue with that with that request as well. Thank you. Can I can I address the landscape real quick, just so you know why? Sure. We we submitted a landscape plan just to get the permit going, um, but I I want to take uh, a personal look at that. You know, we want to use some native plants. You know, the, the the landscape plan that went in was just a generic. You need ten shrubs for every hundred linear feet. We might do a lot more grasses and things. So I, I don't wanna just say, we're gonna conform exactly to what the zoning requirements are. I wanna do a little bit more than that. I wanna make sure it looks nice when it's done. You know, There's a lot of neat native plantings that we should be able to do around here that are native to our area that can, they can come and go every year and, and look great. So um, you know, we, could, we could use what's in there, but I wanted to be able to have the option to change it, not to do less, but to do maybe more. And of course the trees bring birds and the birds, they don't partner up with cars real well. So we just want to move some of that stuff a little bit to the back. So the birds don't set off the alarms. Okay. They don't set off the alarms, but they set the paint off a little bit. Yep. Any other questions by the board? Anyone in the audience? Any idea, any idea what's gonna happen with the Jefferson Street? Yeah, I am the I, mean, well, I, I don't have an idea yet. I've, I've had a few people call that want to redevelop it uh, with no solid plan. So I'm not sure what, what's going to uh, happen with that yet. Is it? Any other questions by the board? Anybody in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Favor? Um, um, yeah, I'm a lot now. 
question about my what, what, you want to address your comments up here, please? Okay. I know you. I'll catch you after me. That was just the meets and bounds and nowhere to walk over. Oh, okay. Nothing's going to happen back there. Don't know what's going on back there. Anyone else wishing to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? Chair closes the petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. I second it. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Pull the board. Mr. Nocturne? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Lesio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. If I could, just before we leave, thank you for your uh, confidence. I'd like to introduce my associate, Nate Washburn, uh, here just a second. Uh, Nate's been assisting me on all matters before the uh, Zoning Board and Plan Commission, and he's going to continue to do a lot more work, and I just wanted you to connect a face to a name. He's an excellent young, young lawyer, and, and just wanted to take the opportunity to... Uh, well, you need all the help you can get. Uh, What's that? I say you need all the help you can yes, get. Yes, I do. <laughs> Thank you. You know that. Thank you very much. Nice meeting you, sir. Let's move on. Okay. Um, we will move back to the top of the agenda, and our next item is... Petition number 2020-35. The applicant in this matter is Augusto Dizon. 301 Park Drive is the location, and the request is for a variation. The petitioner is requesting a variation to reduce the required corner side yard setback from 20 feet to 8.5 feet in order to construct a single-family house on a corner lot. The Zoning Board of Appeals makes the final decision for this vari variation request. Under site-specific information, the lot is located at the southwest corner of Park Drive and Morgan Street, and is uh, a little under, a little over 3,900 square feet. It's currently vacant. The property is in the West Park Subdivision Addition. The existing zoning is R2 single-family residential. Surrounding zoning land use and character. To the north is R2 single family residential, as is the east, south, and west. Applicable regulations are as noted. General discussion. The petitioner desires to construct a single family house on the vacant lot at 301 Park Drive. The proposed one story house would be about 867 square feet and is entirely living space. And that's two bedrooms. Uh, does not include an attached garage. Uh, site plan is currently on the screen. I'm sorry, the floor plan is currently on the screen. The proposed house is being sited with an 8.5 foot setback from the side property line along Morgan Street. The petitioner is requesting a variation to reduce the required corner side yard setback from 20 feet to 8.5 feet because the lot is only 30.4 feet wide and adhering to the required 20-foot setback would not be possible. The proposed house meets all other required setbacks for the R2 zoning district. The proposed house will have a gable roof and fiber cement board siding, which is similar in style to several, several other homes in the neighborhood. Other houses and garages along Morgan are also set back less than 20 feet from the property line. The proposed site plan includes a concrete parking area for two cars off of the public alley adjacent to the rear property line, which provides the two parking spaces required, the two off-street parking spaces required by the zoning ordinance. The petitioner will be required to install public sidewalks along Park Drive. If the zoning board is inclined to approve the requested variation, the following condition should be included that the concrete parking area be installed for two cars off the public alley adjacent to the rear property line prior to a certificate of occupancy being issued. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Petitioner President. You swear the evidence you're about present is the truth under penalty of law. You. Address, please. Uh, Mark Anderson, I'm the architect for the uh, property owner. I'm at 333 West Hubbard, Chicago. Any comments? Uh, no, the staff report is really quite thorough. Um, I'd add to the Morgan Street, the stretch between um, Midland and Center, about a mile and a quarter. There's about 26 lots that are similarly oriented as ours is. And of those uh, 
23 have housings built on them, and I was only able to find uh, four that complied with the 20 foot setback. Uh, and as the neighbor across uh, Park Drive from us is set back similarly to what we're requesting, about eight and a half feet, the neighbor across Morgan Street is a little bit less than that. Uh, so I don't think if you approve our request that we'd be changing the character of the neighborhood in any particular way, nor would you be saying some precedent that would be abused to change the neighborhood moving forward. Okay, any questions by the board? I have a question for the city. Is there a uh, minimum size lot for one on which a house is to be built? This lot is pretty small. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so um, this is what we consider a lot of record. Uh, it is what it is. Um, it predates the zoning ordinance. Um, construction, new construction is allowed on these types of lots uh, with, you know, variances approved. Uh, so um, as a lot of record, uh, it would accommodate a house of this size. So it's legal non-conforming. Legal non-conforming. There's really not much that can be done um, about these types of lots in terms of the, the existing size. But construction is allowed with the appropriate variances. Okay, thank you. Uh, a quick, quick question for you, sir. So the, uh, the schematic that you drew or the floor plan suggests that uh, probably the maximum number of people are three because that's all that can eat at one time. <laughs> um, we, we could rearrange the island to make it five. I mean, there's other things we could do to put more people in there if that's a concern. Yeah. We were trying to keep the home as narrow as possible, not to request even more of a, a variance on that setback. So we've kind of kept the home to 17 feet wide, which is quite narrow. Uh, and so that's kind of what the remainder is once you have a little you know, three feet of hallway. Yeah. If you've ever been down in New Orleans, you see these all the time. They call them shotgun houses. That's, that's what the design's based that's on. Exactly what this is, yeah. yeah. Any other questions oh. by the board? Yeah, is this a, expected to be a rental? No, he'll live in the property. Okay. Yeah. Anybody in the audience wish to speak in favor? Anyone opposed? Chair closes petition of the floor and has the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Sanford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Nactree? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Mr. Chairman, our next item is petition number 2020-36. And that is um, the applicant in this matter is Morningstar Mission Ministries Incorporated. Location is 360 through 368 East Washington Street. Their request is an amendment to a special use permit to allow emergency shelter for women and children. Morningstar, Morningstar Mission Ministries, the applicant is requesting an amendment to, the, to an existing special use permit to allow an emergency shelter for women and children within the existing transitional housing building and within the chapel drop-in center. They are also seeking a vacation of 1,725 square feet of an unused public alley, uh, which will be reviewed later this afternoon by the plan commission. The city council makes the final decision on this special use permit and, vac and for the vacation request. Under site specific information, the existing facility consists of a renovated circa 1908 firehouse that houses a chapel, which, is, which also serves as the drop-in center, storage and administrative offices, as well as a 24 room shelter. The facility was completed in 2005. The firehouse portion of the facility has B3 zoning and the shelter portion of, of the facility has R3 one and two family residential zoning. This existing facility is part of a 1.6 acre complex owned and operated by Morningstar Mission Ministries, which also includes the men's shelter facility at 350 East Washington Street and surrounding vacant land. 
The 360 through 368 East Washington Street facility is also uh, in the floodplain. Surrounding zoning land use and character is as noted. Applicable regulations um, are as noted. Under general discussion, in 2003, the city approved a special use permit to allow the conversion of a former fire station into a chapel and offices to allow the construction of a 21 room shelter for intact families and single mothers with children over the age of 12. In 2005, the city simultaneously repealed the 2003 special use permit and approved a new special use permit for essentially the same project. The new special use permit allowed for a 24 room shelter and increased the length of stay from six months up to 12 months. These allowances were necessary for the project to meet its construction grant funding requirements. Today, the 24 rooms provide transitional housing, which is a type of accommodation that is meant to bridge the gap from emergency crisis shelter to permanent housing for the homeless by offering structure, supervision, support, and life skills. The council memo packet for the 2005 special use permit uh, was also included um, as part of this staff report. The approval of the amendment to the existing special use permit would allow Morningstar Mission Ministries to provide emergency crisis shelter uh, care for women and children in addition to the transitional housing shelter for women, their children, men and their children, women and men and their children, and women uh, that they have provided uh, for since the facility opened in 2005. The emergency shelter care would take place within some of the existing 24 rooms, as well as in the drop-in center as needed for overflow. The drop-in center is located in the chapel. During the day, the drop-in center offers a wide variety of services for men, women, and children who are low income or are experiencing homelessness. The purpose of the drop-in center is to give guests a safe place to be during the day with heating and cooling and provide services that preserve human dignity and promote positive direction. The existing transitional housing operations as well as the proposed emergency shelter operation shall be under responsible supervision 24 hours uh, every day uh, and that's uh, seven days each week. It shall be noted that Morningstar Mission Ministries also uses some of these 24 rooms to house COVID positive tested residents during their period of isolation. The Morningstar Mission facility at 350 East Washington Street offers transitional housing and emergency shelter for men only. Should the Zoning Board of Appeals desire to recommend approval of the amendment to the existing special use permit in order to allow the addition of an emergency shelter for women and children, staff recommends amending conditions of the existing special use permit, uh, the new condition, and that is paragraph A, should state the permitted uses of the renovated fire station structure shall include a chapel, storage areas, meeting rooms, and administrative offices. Residential uses or sleeping quarters shall not be permitted in the storage areas, meeting rooms, and administrative offices. The chapel, also referred to as the drop-in center, shall be permitted for residential uses and sleeping quarters provided that all applicable sanitation and building code regulations are met. The eight additional mandatory conditions of approval established by the 2005 special use permit shall all remain in effect. These mandatory conditions of approval for this facility included paragraph B, the site which includes the chapel offices and shelter shall be developed according to the submitted site plan. Uh, this shall include the preservation and display of the building cornerstone, which shall not be covered, altered, removed, or destroyed. Paragraph C, occupancies at the Family Recovery Center shall not exceed 12 consecutive months. Occupancies shall be limited to not more than 24 families and not more than three persons per room. Paragraph D, not more than 21, I'm sorry, uh, 24 rooms shall be used for residential purposes or as sleeping quarters. Each room shall be at least 336 square feet in size. Each room shall be designed to accommodate not more than three persons. 
Paragraph E, all occupants at the Family Recovery Center residence shall undergo intake screening to ensure a self -house, safe housing environment. The identification of each occupant shall be established with reasonable means, including social security number and state of Illinois identification. Occupants shall be required to consent to the release of this information to the Joliet Police Department and other law enforcement agencies. The applicant shall conduct a criminal background check coordinated with the Joliet Police Department on each proposed occupant. The screening shall also include a de determination whether a proposed occupant is a registered sex offender. The Family Recovery Center may not be used to provide shelter uh, to uh, for sex offenders or for other persons that uh, have uh, posed an unreasonable risk of harm to other occupants, the staff, persons residing near the facility, public safety personnel, or the general public. Paragraph F, adequate security measures and personnel shall be present at all times at the Family Recovery Center. The facility shall be under responsible supervision 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Paragraph G, a designated play area for children shall be provided at the Family Recovery Center. Paragraph H, the applicant shall provide a paved parking area containing not less than 31 parking spaces. The parking area shall conform to the specifications uh, by the Department of Public Works and Utilities. And finally, paragraph H, the special use permit shall be subject to review and revocation if the activities of the occupants on premises or in the adjacent neighborhood create a public nuisance, result in an unreasonable number of nature of calls for service or if the premises violate city, state, or federal laws. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Test your presence. This is where the evidence you're about to present is the truth under penalty of law. Yes. You may have an address, please. Sandra Percy, 350 East Washington Street. Any comments you'd like to make? Uh, the reason we're asking for uh, the uh, special use permit is when uh, Governor Pritzker shut down the state um, March 21st, Catholic Charities Daybreak closed their shelter as did the pads in Grundy and Kendall County. And we were the only shelter that was open until uh, September 15th when Catholic Charities reopened. Uh, they, uh, when they closed, they had 150 beds. When they reopened, they only had 50 beds. And so in order to provide safe shelter for the people who needed it, um, we opened our doors to whomever came. And uh, Jeff Sturr, uh, who was uh, working uh, with Neighborhood Services at the time, was aware that we were taking uh, women and children along with the men and uh, providing shelter. So I just wanted to make sure that we did this legally from now on, and that's why I came to the city to uh, make this change. Thank you. Any comments or questions by the board? Sounds wonderful. Thank you, Thank you for doing it. Thank you. I was trying to think of the name of the old man that Peter McCarthy. Tried, what was it? Pete what? Peter McCarthy. Peter McCarthy. I, I should have not been. I was actually <clears> remember <throat> the guy. I know it's Pete something or other. Yeah. I remember him quite well. Yeah. He founded it in 1909. Yeah. Do great work over there. Thank you so much. Any other questions by the board? Anyone in the audience wish to speak in favor? In favor, come forward. Read the evidence you're about to present as the truth under penalty of law? I do. Your name and address, please. Lori Plusinski, 350 East Washington. I am a resident of the Daybreak Drop In Center. I am obviously handicapped, and I was wondering if the 
new event, um, proposals would include more handicap accessible features. I've been in the facility for a month and in that time I've had two accidents where I had to be transported to the hospital because of their lack of handicap accessibility. Please make that a point in consideration of this, this zoning. Thank, Thank you. you. Give her some assistance, please. There you go. Thank you. It's for your, the evidence you're about to present us the truth on the penalty of law. Yes. Name and address. Uh, Erica Phoenix Rain. Um, I'm also a resident of uh, Morningstar Mission for the for the past uh, two two months, maybe about a week a week and a few days after that. Um, this is the first time I've been um, considered homeless and away from my house. And uh, I've been taking a big interest in looking around the towns and the cities. And I've been actually very excited at the experience to understand more of the town. I've been a hermit my whole life. I've been uh, uh, sheltered in my house for uh, practically my whole life. And this is the first time I've been undergoing this experience and I have seen very troubling things that are happening with these people. Um, they need help. They need good food. They're not getting good food. I'm not getting good food. Um, it's making some people sick. Uh, what Miss Lori said about the wheelchair assistance, she definitely needs help. There is not enough assistance uh, for, you know, people with disabilities. Um, there is some conditions uh, for cleanliness that I'm also in concern about. Um, the, the bathrooms on the inside, uh, you know, I don't know if they're just not getting product or uh, I'm being told that they have the money, but they're not uh, sheltering it out for, for the right uh, causes. So I don't know. I don't know their books. Um, I'm very grateful for the opportunity that they've been giving me as well as other people um, being staying there. But um, a lot of their speeches that that they give when pastors come, a lot of them aren't actually trained pastors. Um, they're not actually helping the people so much. They're actually creating uh, more hostility among the people. Uh, we've had some people come in and give good lectures, but they're very few and far in between. Um, I have had personal uh, violence and discrimination towards me, uh, specifically by staff and, and people um, come in. I have been kicked in the face uh, the first week that I stayed there. Uh, I was called a faggot, and um, it was uncalled for. Uh, I did not press charges on the man because uh, that's not what I'm there for. Um, there is this sense of, uh, through the staff, um, propelling people by use of intimidation or fear of being thrown out and then being totally humus, homeless without nothing for them. And I don't know why this is, why the, the people at Morningstar are actually doing this, if it's just their, the way that their staff is trained. Uh, but the, what I'm trying to get is they definitely need help. They definitely need support in, in helping uh, make this a good place for the homeless and for the, for the community. Um, I don't really know so much about the zoning things. This is the first time I've ever appeared uh, here. Uh, but some of the people are actually being charged to stay there. Uh, the men, mostly, they're being charged to stay in their side of the shelter, and I don't know why. Uh, a lot of people are spending more time outside than actually inside. It's so hard to actually uh, find, for some of these people, find work and find um, use with their talents um, because they're more stuck on the streets than actually staying inside and even in the drop-in center. Um, so that's that's all I have to, to share. Um, I don't know what amendments that, that you're going to consider here now or in the future, but I just want that to be known. Um, one other troubling thing for uh, the shelter by daybreak 
they have razor wire on the porch of the house next door, next to it. I looked at that recently. I don't know who put that there, but that is evil. Someone needs to either take that away or, um, you know, people are going to get hurt. Animals are going to get hurt. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Chair, close the petition on the floor and ask the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to be in order. Motion to approve. I second it. We have a motion to second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Nocturne? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Yeah, uh, I don't know who would do it, but check that house next to you if there's if there is razor wire on it, that could be dangerous to anyone in the neighborhood. So yeah, I, I made a note of that, and we'll send someone out to check it. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Mr. Chairman, the next item on our agenda is petition number 2020-37. Uh, uh, the applicant in this matter is John Bays, location 110 through 116 North Chicago Street. Uh, the request is for a special use permit and variations. The petitioner is requesting a special use permit to allow the addition of 20 apartment units uh, in the B2 Central Business Zoning District and variances from the city's planned unit development requirement and lot area per family requirement from 2,500 square feet to 1,089 square feet as per the applicable zoning ordinance uh, special uses, multifamily uh, dwellings in a planned unit development provided that not, not more than 10 dwelling units per net residential acre shall be permitted with the advice of the Zoning Board of Appeals in accordance with section 47-5.2. The Zoning Board makes the final decision for the variation request. Under site-specific information, the one-story precast building located at 110 is on a uh, 10,890 square foot site and contains vacant space that is being marketed for a restaurant. The six story brick building at 116 North Chicago Street is located on a 4,400 square foot site and currently contains vacant office space. The first four floors are remaining office space. The property is zoned B2 Central Business District Zoning Surrounding zoning land use and character is as noted. Uh, applicable regulations are as noted. Under general discussion, the requested special use permit and variations on the planned unit development and lot area per family requirement will allow the petitioner to renovate the fifth and sixth floors of 116 North Chicago Street with a total of 20 new apartment units. The petitioner is proposing 10 units on each floor 18 units will be one bedroom apartments and two units will be two bedroom apartments. Two community laundry rooms, two elevators and two stairways will be made available for both floors. The exterior of the building will not be altered. Approval of the special use permit request should not negatively affect the surrounding area. Additionally, the petitioner is not proposing any changes to the footprint of the building and has submitted conceptual floor plans to justify the waiver of the planned unit development requirement and lot area per family requirements. If the zoning board is inclined to approve the requested special use permit and variations, uh, the following conditions uh, would be included. Should the property be declared a public nuisance, it shall be subject to a rehearing and possible revocation of the special use permit. That concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Petitioner present. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Bruce Konzelman for the petitioner. the truth under penalty of law. I do. Name and address. Bruce Konzelman, 54 North Ottawa Street, 360 Joliet, Illinois. I'm here with my client and petitioner, John Bays. Uh, I think Mr. Jackson has accurately set forth the facts in this matter as far as the, the use, the number of bedrooms, um, the eight, 18 uh, single bedrooms and uh, two two bedrooms and two studios. Um, I think a couple of comments. I, I know that the city planners are very interested in creating some uh, 
downtown residential and multi-use. Uh, just thinking about this, I suppose 50 years ago, there was a lot of multi-use where they had people living upstairs and you know, businesses downstairs, but that seems you know, gone by the wayside. So this is kind of reinventing the circle a little bit. Uh, I think you all know Mr. Bays. I think you know that he does things in a first class manner. And I'm sure that the development of these apartment units will be you know, first class uh, and really nice places to live and will be an enhancement to the building and certainly won't impede because uh, he has the tenants below. So he's not gonna do anything that's gonna jeopardize the uh, uh, this building and its um, its appearance, because uh, he needs first class, wants first class tenants uh, in a in a, uh, for a commercial setting as well as a residential, and also with the hopes of if we can uh, eventually get a restaurant, things change eventually in life in the other part of the uh, complex. So um, that's really the only comments if I have. There's any other questions? I'd be more than happy to address the board. Uh, those going to be condos or apartments? Apartments. Apartments. Rental rental apartments, not condominiums. And you've done some marketing. What uh, element are you looking for? What are the prices going to be on these? You know, John could probably better address that. Do you have a range, John, of what you're looking for as far as rentals? Uh, Price range. John, I must swear you in. Yes. Yeah. Swear the evidence you're about to present is the truth under the penalty of law. Yes. Even address, please. John Bays, 15100 West 159th Street, Homer Lynn. Um, these are up, uh, I'm planning on building upscale apartments. Um, I'm trying to attract attorneys, uh, people that would like to live downtown and work downtown. Um, I'm proposing, an, uh, working with the city right now, maybe to buy one of the parking decks and, and, and install some garages so these apartments will have garages with them. That's my next thing that's gonna be coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, that was going to be one of my questions, is what are you going to do for accommodate to parking? So, oh, we definitely will have the parking. Uh, at least well, should the uh, sale a lot to of the our city property falls on Scott through. Street deck right now that's right next door. Yeah, if the city fall, if that falls through, what would you do then? Reserve spaces in the deck? or? Yes, I, I already lease um, a lot of space in the Scott Street deck. I have accommodations well, already for this. parking there for you, I know that. I'm just wondering what the contractual arrangement would be. Um, I know Mr. Uh, Petri uh, has a similar situation where he has apartments and he I think, leases two spaces for each unit. Uh, well, I, Mr. Cassidy, I think one thing you might add is that, uh, unlike Mr. Petri, John has a lot of parking spaces. He owns the Gold Castle Auto Building. He owns parking I'm lots on, 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 on Castle Street. So yeah. he's got some options that he can use if he can't use the parking. Uh, parking will not be an issue on this. That's not an issue. I'm, I'm very familiar with apartments. I bought 500 apartments. Uh, actually, um, they were all in very disrepair and uh, ran 100% occupancy on 500 apartments. Yeah, I walked through there with you one day, if I remember correctly. Uh, what would the price range on? What, so you're going to have efficiencies up to two bedrooms? Just, uh, they, you know, Generally, I'd say uh, from 1100 to 1500 a month in that range. That's moderate price. Very good. We, we are uh, planning on everyone having their own utilities. That building is an all electric building. I'm spending a fortune switching it over to gas so everyone can have their own electric and, and gas bill. Well, you've done a good job on it so far. I know that. So. Uh, that building, I plan on moving my headquarters from West Jefferson Street down into that building also. Uh -huh. Uh, we've moved the superintendent of schools in there. I'm pretty sure where they are. We've uh, moved some Chicago law firms in there. Uh, insurance people has already moved in. Uh, the building, I, I think, with this restaurant, we're spending over a million dollars in that restaurant. I'm planning on having a first-class restaurant where the people downtown can eat. I'm hoping to get the people from the west side to come on there. I'm trying to get the, a, a nice named restaurant in there to bring people from down from the west side downtown to eat. Well, I wish you luck on all of that. Uh, it, it'll work good. This is the 50th, the 57th bankrupt property I've bought, and every one's been a success. I mean, that's a pretty good record. Good. Any other questions by the board? Is there anyone in the audience wishing to speak in favor? Is there anyone opposed? 
Chair closes the petition to the floor and asks the board for discussion and a motion. Motion to approve. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the petition. Pull the board, please. Mr. Lucio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Nachtrieb? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Ms. Safford? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Mr. Chairman, the next item on our agenda is petition number 2020-38. The applicant in this matter is Kavan Kumar uh, Paduya. The owner is Medva Real Estate Incorporated, location 1110 Hobolt Road. Uh, the request is a special use permit for a wall-mounted electronic message center that exceeds the maximum illuminated 50 square foot uh, uh, area. The applicant is requesting a special use permit for a wall mounted electronic message center that exceeds the maximum illuminated 50 square foot area. Located at 1110 Hobolt Road, the City Council makes the final decision on this special use permit request. Under site specific information, the existing Cambridge Commons retail plaza was constructed around 2000. The property is 3.18 acres in size. The property is zoned B1 neighborhood business. The applicant operates Joliet Food and Liquor, which sells liquor and packaged food. He began leasing the 3,600 square foot retail space, uh, and that actually spans three retail store units uh, on January 1st, 2020. Surrounding zoning land use and character, to the north is R2 single family residential, and that is the Cambridge and College Park residential subdivisions. To the south is B1 neighborhood business, uh, detention basin and retail plaza. To the east is R2 single family residential, Cambridge and College Park residential subdivisions. To the west is R1 single family residential, and that is Joliet Junior College. Under applicable regulations, um, we have section 47-17.21, paragraph six, electronic message center signs. Section 47-5.2, paragraph C, criteria for the issuance of a, sing, of a special use permit. Under general discussion, the applicants applied for a sign permit for a 58.2 square foot LED digital display sign in August 2020. The city sign regulations consider LED digital display signs to be electronic message centers or EMCs. An EMC is a type of illuminated sign that utilizes computer generated messages or some other electronic means of changing copy. These signs include displays using incandescent LEDs, LCDs, or a flipper matrix. The city sign regulations limit the maximum illuminated area of an EMC to 50 square feet. An EMC larger than 50 square feet only may be allowed as a special use permit by the mayor and city council. Therefore, the applicants request approval of a special use permit for 58.2 square uh, foot EMC. Elevations and specifications for this sign can be found as an attachment in the staff report. Uh, photos of the subject property are also part of the staff report and being displayed on the screen. The intent of the city's EMC sign regulations, which were adopted in 2017, was to expedite the review and approval of standard size EMC sign um, request that met the requirements outlined in the zoning ordinance. EMCs are typically a component of a monument style sign or a pylon sign located <clears throat> at single tenant property or a multi-tenant property use. Uh, such as a retail plaza or retail center. Occasionally, the city sees sign permit applications for wall-mounted EMCs. It should be noted that the city's sign regulations allow one EMC per lot, including retail centers. Should this special use permit, permit be approved, the Cambridge Commons Retail Plaza would not be allowed to have a monument-style sign with, a, with an EMC, nor would any other tenant be allowed to have an EMC without the future approval of a variance. The single tenant wall mounted EMC that is being proposed in this setting 
could set a precedent for these types of signs in the future, which would be counter to the spirit and intent of the 2017 ordinance. Should the Zoning Board of Appeals desire to recommend approval of the special use permit for a wall-mounted EMC that exceeds the maximum uh, illuminated 50 square foot area, the following conditions should be included. Number one, the LED digital display sign electronic message center shall not exceed 58.2 square feet. Two, that the LED EMC shall meet all other sign regulations that are outlined in the zoning ordinance. And that concludes the staff report, Mr. Chairman. Tester President. You swear the evidence you're about to present us the truth under penalty of law. I do. Do you have an address? Double Patel, uh, 15221 Cottonwood Court, Orland Park. Any comments? Uh, this uh, uh, rental property that we got, uh, when we obtained it, there was only two business in this uh, whole plaza. The whole plaza was run down. Uh, the weeds were up to waist height. Uh, and we uh, got these three units, uh, which is a significant portion of this uh, 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 strip mall. Uh, and because of our misunderstanding, uh, we ordered this special uh, sign. Uh, we misunderstood that uh, the ordinance is up to 50 square feet. We thought it's a 60 square feet, and we special ordered this sign. Uh, and. Uh, we made it slightly less than 60 square feet. Uh, uh, now we spend a lot of money ordering this sign and have a custom made this sign. Uh, we humbly request you guys to approve uh, this so that we can uh, spruce up this uh, complex and have more tenant move in. <coughs> Thank you. Any questions by the board? Yeah, I, I have one. So your store occupies three units out of the, what is it, 10 units in the whole? Yes, sir. Uh, and how many other businesses are there right now? So there is uh, one in that corner you can see on this picture. Uh, the half of that unit is owned, uh, by the Mexican restaurant and half of it, uh, a new tenant just moved in. And there's only one other, uh, Jimmy John's uh, and uh, China Kitchen uh, is there. Have, have you discussed your sign with them and are they uh, comfortable with you having the sign and what it means for them that they cannot have a sign like that? Yes, so we have discussed it with the uh, property owner, uh, uh, Mehra, <coughs> Mr. Mehra, and as well as with uh, the next door neighbors and the China Kitchen and uh, Jimmy John. Jimmy John's are uh, uh, the manager we talked and he said that they, their corporate sign is uh, the sign. They, they are not planning to change any of that. And this sign of yours, which is what they call what EMC, are you proposing to have a variety of messages shown on it, or are you just going to have it say uh, uh, food and liquor or what? Uh, occasionally we will change the message, uh, but uh, most of the time it will be Joliet food and liquor it will uh, display. If we are running some special, uh, we might just have it on a display uh, that, but other than that, uh, we are not planning to uh, have a rotating or flicking or flickering sign or anything that would distract anybody. And this sign would be facing westward uh, towards the Joliet uh, uh, Community College. College. So it's not uh, going to be at anybody's home or anybody can see from their home. And there are still uh, units in the building that are vacant? Uh, many of them. Okay. Right, thank you. I had another question. If uh, you just had one unit instead of three, You'd be allowed to have a 50 square foot sign, right? Correct. Okay. Yeah, but nobody else would. Anybody that has a unit there is limited to a 50 square foot sign. Grant Kendall, is that right? Each unit can have a 50 square foot sign? Yes. 
Okay. Not digital though, but not 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 the EMC sign. Okay. Right. Any further questions for the board? Anyone in the audience wish to speak a favor? Anyone oppose? Chair closes petition. Ask the board for discussion and a motion. Well, due to the changing, it involves quite a few other businesses. I would have to make a motion not to support this against it. It's a motion to deny. Motion to deny. Is there a second to that motion? Second. We have a motion and a second to deny the petition to the board. Ms. Sanford? No. Mr. Lesio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? No. Mr. Nactree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Okay, this will move on to the City Council. Uh, no. May I? Uh, if we uh, get a written letter from the rest of the business and uh, the owner, uh, would you guys consider to approve it? You you can um, you can do that, provide it to staff, and we can include that in what goes to the city council. That's your next step. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, Mr. Chairman, um, we have no items under old or new business, not for final action or recommendation. Um, our next item would be public comments. This section is for anyone wanting to speak regarding a non-agenda item. Four minute maximum. Seeing none, uh, is there a motion for adjournment? Motion be in order. Now let's just sit here. I so move. Second. Motion. Hold the board. Ms. Sanford? Aye. Mr. Alessio? Aye. Mr. McCauley? Aye. Mr. Nactree? Aye. Mr. Riggs? Aye. Mr. Hennessy? Aye. Thank you.